Homeless people, free bread, overly friendly people, waiters asking me how I'm doing every five minutes. Welcome back to the US, David. Hey, it's David and welcome back to my channel. So I'm back in the US on summer holiday and I can't believe it's been four years in Europe, four years in the Netherlands. And every time I come back to the US, I do experience some type of reverse culture shock. So in this video, I want to share with you some of the biggest culture shocks that I've experienced coming back to the US. Let's talk about homelessness. When you think about a city like San Francisco, you might think about technology, you might think about Silicon Valley, you might think about a first world country, a first world city, but you'll be shocked when you come downtown to see tents, to see people shooting up, to see needles, to see a big homeless population. And it's always a big shock for me to come back, even though I grew up in the city, because the homeless population has gotten progressively worse and worse throughout the years in a place like San Francisco, Portland, and it's a shock because in Europe, in the Netherlands, you don't see homeless people. I'm sure there are homeless people, but you just don't see them on the streets. And it's sad because many of these homeless people have mental problems. They're shouting, they're yelling, and they're not getting the help that they need. In a place like Amsterdam, I believe 30 to 40% of housing is dedicated to social housing. And there's a welfare program as well. But in a place like San Francisco, it's extremely expensive. I can imagine it to be very difficult for anyone to get by, let alone someone making minimum wage or someone who has mental problems. It's extremely hard for them. I don't know what the solution is, but it's always a big reverse culture shock for me to come back. And it begs the question, did I come back to a first world country, third world country? So let's talk about something a little bit more positive. Let's talk about American overfriendliness because it's always a shock for me to come back to the US to have people, random bus drivers, security guards, ask me how I am, have a great day, good morning, good evening. And it's a shock because in Europe, you don't get that all the time. Now, a few weeks ago when I came back to the US, I went to the state capitol building in Sacramento, California, and as I was leaving, the security guard says something to me, and I thought I was in trouble. What did I do wrong? But he only said, have a great evening. And it was a big shock to me. I had to laugh it off. But I think it's a great thing, right? Some people might think Americans are over-friendly, superficial, but for me, it can brighten up your day. The other day, I was in the elevator and this woman comes up to me. I was kind of stressed out at that point in time and she strikes up a conversation and within a few minutes, I felt a lot better, that human connection. While people might think Americans are over-friendly, superficial, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and for me, that's a great thing. And this over-friendliness leads me to my next topic about customer service. You immediately notice the difference between customer service levels in the US and levels in Europe. It's a lot better in the US. Well, there are several factors. One big thing is that people in Europe are paid a fair wage, even waiters and waitresses. They're not working for tips. In the US, many waiters, waitresses have a wage, probably a minimum wage, but they're also working for tips. So there's an incentive for people to provide better customer service. Also, customer service is taught to people. It's uh, enforced. As a customer, it really helps because when you enter a restaurant, yes, it's about the food, but a big part of it, it's about the experience, the level of customer service that you get. And it's a lot better in the US. But it can go a little bit too far because the other day I was at a restaurant with friends and we were catching up. We hadn't seen each other in five, six, seven years. We were talking about deep subjects and this waitress kept coming back every five, six, seven minutes. How are you? Do you want another drink? Anything else for you? That was so annoying because we were in the middle of this very deep conversation and then this waitress kept coming in and ruining the conversation. So on the one hand, customer service is a lot better in the US, but it can also be way too much. And tipping is also a big reverse culture shock as well because in Europe, you pay one price on the menu, but in the US, you have to readjust to the fact that on top of this price, you have to pay sales tax and then you have to tip as well. So you're adding potentially around 25% extra on top of the price that you see on the menu. So psychologically, you have to readjust to that as well. Oh yeah, there's a lot more free stuff in the US. 
Let me explain. In a place like the Netherlands in Europe, you have to pay to use the toilet. You have to pay for ketchup. But in the US, all these things are free. They're part of the package, part of the experience. You get free bread in restaurants. There's free ketchup, free condiments. You can use the toilet at McDonald's. And that's a really nice thing because it was a shock for me to go to Europe to have to pay for everything. But in the US, everything is part of that package. It's more convenient. There's free stuff, free ketchup, <laughs> free bread, and it's really nice. And all this free stuff might not be the best thing because I'm always shocked when I come back to see all these fat people, to see obese people. 40, 42% of Americans are obese. That's a big number. And I'm not surprised because when I look around, I see a McDonald's here, Burger King, Taco Bell, Jack in the Box. There are so many fast food restaurants and they're so convenient as well. Many of them are open 24 hours. There's this graph that was shared online that I was surprised and shocked by. It shows that Americans spend the most on healthcare, but has the lowest life expectancy. This really begs the question, why? What is going on? And when I think about it, every time I come back to the US, I gain weight. Well, that's because of family reasons. My mom is feeding me a lot more, but people also commented online saying that Europeans, when they come to the US, they also gain a lot more weight than when they travel elsewhere. And I think it goes back to the fact that when you look at the food, what's inside the food, it's a lot healthier in a place like Europe as compared to the US. I don't know enough to comment on this, but from the comments, it shows that what goes into the food in the US, it's not good. It still shocks me to this day to look around to see people who are not just, say, fat, but really, really obese. You don't see that every day in a place like Amsterdam or in Europe in general. Another reverse culture shock that I have coming back to the US connected to obesity is the fact that supermarkets, grocery stores are big. They're huge in the US. There's anything and everything that you can find, a lot more variety. And this can be a good or bad thing. Now, in the Netherlands, there are these big supermarket chains as well, and you can find anything and everything there, but there aren't as many options as the US. In the US, if you go down a supermarket, you can find 30 options of cereal, anything and everything. So on one hand, it's quite the experience, right? You have so many options, but on the other hand, it can be really hard to choose. I spend a lot more time shopping in the US because, oh, there's this new variety of this, there's a new cereal, there's this new package of orange chicken. And it's on one hand fun, but you also get, what do you call it, decision fatigue, or it's hard to choose because there's so many options, but it is fun. And yes, you have a lot more variety, more convenience, more stores in the US but you have to drive everywhere to get there. And that's always a big shock for me coming back to the, to the US because I could be driving five, six, seven hours in a place like California and still be in the same state. If I drive five, six, seven hours in Europe, I could be in a different country, sometimes two countries. And that's one thing I do like about Europe. I could take a train and be in Paris within three, four hours, London, same time as well. In the US, the distances are just very big and that could be a good thing if you enjoy driving, road tripping, there's a lot of time for reflection, but you do need a car to get around in the US. And public transportation, well, how do I put this in a friendly way? Public transportation in the US is not so great as compared to Europe. Well, because the distances are so big, you have to drive everywhere, but the infrastructure in the US, it's not really built for public transportation, it's built for driving. Even in a place like San Francisco where you have multiple modes of transportation, it's not so efficient. I also lived in LA for 10 years and well, public transportation there is a nightmare. It's even worse than driving there because I remember having to get to work and driving took about an hour and a half sometimes but if I took public transportation, it would have taken three hours one way. Now that's pretty bad. And when you drive everywhere, you see all these billboards, you see capitalism in your face, and that's always 
a, a big shock for me coming back to right the ads the billboards everywhere on your TV on cars in public toilets everywhere that's part of American society the fabric of American society is capitalism and you grow up with it as well even on TV I was shocked to see all these commercials I was in this cafe the other day and I read this poster that said why be average when you can be amazing and I had to laugh because it reminded me of the fact that I'm back in the US because in the Netherlands people are taught to be average you don't want to stand out but in the US we're taught at a very early age that you want to be the best you want to be better than everyone else and it's drilled into our mindsets the education system we are competing to get into a good school to get a good job and we're always competing and trying to be overly ambitious which can be a great thing because for me it pushed me people around me pushed me to become a better version of myself but at the same time it can be dangerous if you don't know how to take care of yourself because you could always be comparing yourself and running on this treadmill of trying to be better than everyone else comparing yourself in one sense it's a great thing but on the other hand it can be dangerous but I always have to laugh because the mindset of living in the Netherlands trying to be average is completely different than the mindset of Americans trying to stand out and speaking of standing out versus standing in it's always a, a big shock for me to come back to the US to reconnect with friends and for them to tell me that they're working until 11, 12, 1 a.m. because people do work a lot more hours in the U.S. as compared to Europe I also remember working a lot more hours in the U.S. as well it's a difference in culture, work culture people in Europe seem to work to live people in the U.S. seem to live to work and there's no right or wrong answer but it is true people do work longer hours in the US people get less vacation days in the US as well people in Europe especially now in the summertime everyone is off on summer holidays and vacation yeah there's no right or wrong answer but that's a fact and that's always a shock for me to come back to the US wow i can't believe it's been four years abroad for me and every time i do come back to the us i do experience reverse culture shock probably because i've changed as a person i've learned so much i guess there's no right or wrong answer to live a good life but these are in fact some of the differences that i've experienced some of the shocks i do miss many things about american life the convenience the American ambitiousness it really has driven me to become a better version of myself there's also many things I don't miss I don't miss the homeless problem I don't miss the obesity problem and in many ways I don't feel European I don't feel very American anymore I don't feel very Asian I don't really know what to feel to be honest but hey I guess this is what it feels like to be a global citizen well I'm excited to continue exploring but I'm also very curious to hear from you what have been your reverse culture shocks coming back to the US or to your home country